feel soppy even saying this, but I just feel so glad that there's no animosity between us. Like it's all over. That's all gone. Like that was that was like a long time ago. So much in the series is sort of at the intersection of mental illness and um and and then cultural belief and and the way the yeah. the, the two things play off each other, which in a way is also expressed in the QAnon phenomenon, which seems on the one hand a kind of delusion, a delusionary belief in, in the idea that there's satanic paedophiles r- running the world and having cults and, 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 you know, in a cult and having sacrifices. And then on, on the other hand, is held by people who in other respects appear to be rational human beings, right? Well, yes. Uh, another reason why I wanted to make things fell apart was because I, I got contacted by Robbie Williams during the pandemic. And he was like, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this because he said it publicly too. He was... Um, t- Toying with QAnon. It was so early that I really didn't know much about QAnon when he phoned me up and said, what do you know about QAnon? He said he's he doesn't know whether to believe in it or not. He said the thing that's stopping him from believing in it is because some people think that he is part of the satanic child sacrificing cabal. And he knows that's not true. He said to me, uh, he said, I know it's not true about me. So that's giving me pause about the rest of it. But I still don't know that it's not true. So I became curious because Robbie called me. So I, I, I spoke to a woman who runs a support group for people who've lost loved ones to QAnon. And she said two things to me that were extraordinary and really were another factor for me wanting to make this series. One was, she said, we call it a boomer revolution, like look after your grandparents. She said most Q people are, you know, older. They're older people. And secondly, she said, you can become entranced in days. And I thought, well, something's happening to our brains. Something's happening to us that's making us change in this way. So that, that was my starting point. What did you say to Robbie, by the way? Do, uh, I, did you sort of say, oh, come on, man, get a grip? Well, what I said to Robbie was, if we're going to do this, then I'm obviously going to be the scully to your moulder. Mm. Is it, or is it the other way around? Which was the sceptic? Would you rather be the woman or the man? Well, I want to be the sceptic. <laughs> Can I just say, by the way, I'm really glad that there's... I'm genuinely very glad that... I feel soppy even saying this, but I just feel so glad that there's no animosity between us. Like, it's all over. It's all gone. Like, that was, that was like, a long time ago. I right? was expecting... That was quite a low bar for sort of a bonding moment. I thought it was going to be like, we have such a great friendship or that we can talk <laughs> about things that I can't talk about with anyone else, even my wife. But all it was was, there's no animosity. Like, I could say that about quite a few people in my life. I thought you were going to say, like, we're like, like astronauts. We're the only ones who've been to the moon and no one else has seen what we've seen. <laughs> I, I can talk to you about things that I can't talk to my wife about because when I try to talk to my wife about work, she just rolls her eyes. But yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just very happy that I've matured my way out of any dis- destructive thought spiral that I might have had about you in the 1990s. And I don't want to kill you, and I don't obsess on ways that you might die. When you win BAFTAs, all I do now is just cheer. <laughs> I've Great got the news. best news. He's won Louis. another one. Louis won another Who BAFTA. Has? Louis. Louis. <laughs> He's got. A, it's his third. How many have you got, John? Uh, Stop it. Well, <laughs> that was me being Elaine. That wasn't me. <laughs> 